welcome to the second part of our lecture. Uh, in this part, I will share with you some possible pathways and end it with 10 simple steps that we can reflect on. So for these, for these pathways, I suggest four ways of uh, addressing the, the climate or even the environmental crisis. The first is to, to look at things whole again to learn to, to look at things whole, an integral way of looking. Second is to help, or at least to begin to learn how to lead others, uh, not just our own communities, but to lead the commons. The third is education, which is what we're trying to do these days. It's to transform mindsets, but not just individual minds, Hopefully, we can transform cultures. Fourth and last is to discover God again, spirituality. So on the first, well, I hope that since, since uh, this crisis was has been spawned by our myopic or narrow views on, on nature, our partitioning of life, I hope that we can begin again to look at things whole. This picture is an example. These are people who are planting mangroves. This is, uh, mangroves are forests, act actual forests uh, along the seashore. But they know, and this is in Mindanao actually, they are they're planting forests here uh, by the seashore, but understanding also that this effort is useless if the forest in the mountains is not taken care of. So this ridge to river to reef project actually acknowledges, for example, that we need to look at creation whole. I cannot just clean the Ateneo campus if, I, if I'm not cleaning also C5. Or I cannot just clean C5. I, I have to look at things whole. So the environmental crisis has actually forced us, is compelling us to look at things whole. Second, to lead the commons, a leader does not just lead his own tribe, uh, his, own, uh, his or her own fraternity or sorority. Uh, a leader looks beyond, beyond the boundaries. And these days, I think what we've been seeing is that Someone has to take care of what is called the commons. The commons is anything we share. It can be a CR. It can be a corridor, a street. Lights, street lights, etc. A forest. Uh, this picture of our own uh, professors working in Lake Palatpakin is, is really just an example of fishermen not just worrying about their little fish pens but being asked to look at the whole lake. You know, this is an example, for instance, where they were wondering how come the fish were dying? Well, it was because they were overfeeding, but they did not realize that. Someone had to tell them, someone from outside telling them, look, look at the whole lake. You know, we are sometimes just trained to look within a small circle. Well, if it's an entire lake, then yes, we need leaders. And leaders are those people who worry not just about their own, but worry about the welfare of others. Because worrying about others will also affect your own. Third, well, here in the Ateneo at least, and in many liberal arts universities, we are trying to form not just the professional side of you. Yes, you will be a good psychologist or economist or manager someday. But we want you to learn more than just your own profession. We don't want you partitioned. We want you to love learning. We need to cultivate these habits of critical thinking, of this, this facility to communicate. Now, these are so-called liberal arts skills that are very much in demand actually today. And so we need to look at the entire person, which is something that is, you would say, the Ateneo way. Part of this is really educating persons and cultures. I see this picture and I ask myself, how did she learn this? How do you learn to love something bigger than yourself? Um, family? School? 
friends, perhaps. We need to educate persons and cultures as well. Love of country does not just come automatically. Love of creation, love of the world, they're not automatic. They have to be worked at. And, and education is key, is key to that cultivation of this love. Pope Francis calls this social love. So it's not just personal love, it's, it's love of a bigger group. Uh, fourth and last, well, can we discover God again? Now there's a part in the Bible that has been misinterpreted in Genesis. This command to go forth and multiply and to subdue everything. And again, that's a misplaced sense of our centrality. Right? That, you know, it's, it's this view that I am here, I'm special, and therefore I am supposed to, you know, I'm supposed to use you for, for my own benefit. Well, if we recover again the divine mandate, if you go back to Genesis, and if you look at this part of the story where the Lord tells Adam, the man, tells him, puts him in a garden, tells him, you are there? to cultivate and to care for this garden. Two verbs, abad, shamar. To cultivate, to work, to work at it, to work the earth. Bungkalin mo. These two verbs are two, can be two polar opposites. First, you're asking me, God, you're asking me to, to work on the garden, and then at the same time, you're telling me not to touch it, to protect it. We are not just to, you know, protect, but we're actually there, our mandate is also to, to work, to work at it. Because if I don't do anything, the garden will also die. So it's also important for us to be part of the growing of this garden. And I think that's a powerful, that's a powerful mandate from, from the Lord that I'm not just here to enjoy, to enjoy the garden. I'm also here to work on it but at the same time, protect this garden. St. Ignatius Loyola also ha has a contribution. You know, when, when, when he came into the world, he actually told us that, you know, it's also important to be immersed in this world because this world is good. This world is God's creation. And therefore, we need to find God moving in this world as well. And so with this kind of spirituality, I hope, I hope that we can deepen our spiritual connections. Spirituality is not just some abstract thing that you go to some remote place to find God. No, you can find God even in the heat and noise of the marketplace. Uh, and, and this revolutionary idea, I think, is something very difficult for us to practice even in, in daily life. But that is... That is, a, that is because of an abiding faith that God is not just a God of the spirit, or a God of souls. He is also a God of human bodies, a God of matter, a God of the universe. So I hope we can, we can recover these treasures in our spirituality. Let me end by, well, telling you or sharing with you these 10 steps. These are 10 steps that I've sort of generated and I encourage you, I encourage you to please uh, list your own 10 simple steps that will help us, well, care and protect this garden. The first is this. This is a picture of Pope Francis actually in Tacloban. And he tells us, he has so many messages for us, but he says, let us, I hope, have this habit of saying, grace before and after meals. This moment of blessing, he says, however brief, reminds us that we are not independent, that we depend on others. We depend on God. We depend on the farmer. We depend on the fishermen who, who uh, provide us what we need. And so this act of saying thank you is actually an act of humility. It is not an act of entitlement. When you say thank you, you realize that 
you are not self-contained, you can never be self-made. Second, oh, number nine, I'll go 10 to 1, a la David Letterman, if you still remember David Letterman. Number nine, climb a mountain. I've done this. I hope you, you will someday. But the point really here is to get a sense of scale, a sense of size. When you climb a mountain, you realize how small you are. And the point is to evoke a sense of radical dependence and contingency that things are not really needed. We are not needed, but we're here. That's one of the greatest mysteries of all. Things are difficult to control. I am small. So this sense of size, this sense of scale, will hopefully le lead us to a sense of gift and gratuity. Uh, that's number nine. Number eight, unplug. Unplug and savor the silence. Let go of the wires. Let go of the wireless even. Go to a place where you can find inner quiet. Visit the grave of someone dear to you. Go to a chapel, learn to pray again. And when alone or quiet, try not to wallow or mope. Don't yield to a lot of rewinding and regretting. Just relish and rest and breathe. Number eight, oh, seven na pala. Repair something broken. It can be a bicycle, it can be a coffee mug, anything of value to you. Learn the Japanese art of kintsugi. This art is the art of repairing something broken and, and lacing or dusting the, the cracks with precious metal like gold or silver or platinum. It flows from the philosophy of Wabi Sabi where, which values the whole history of the object. Kahit ni mga lamat. Laces them with these things. And, but that's the, whole, that's the whole you. That's the whole me. We're not perfect. We have all these dents and imperfections. Resist something. Resist the temptation to buy something just because it is broken. Number six, get to know a poor person. You have, you have them everywhere. You can go to a hospital, a waste dump, any place that is on the margins, peripheral to wealth and power. There will be poor people there. Poor people become poor when they are marginalized, when they are shunted to the physical, environmental, and social margins. Share something with them, yes. Learn to receive from them. There are many causes of social and environmental poverty. Selfishness is the biggest cause of them all. Number five, try fasting. Try fasting, not just to lose the calories. You might wish to fast on shopping as well, or any of those subtle compulsions of modern life. Or if fasting is difficult for you, try gluttony. Try to eat a lot and feel the empty. Number four, go read a book to children. Reconnect with children. You know, children have a way of reminding us of the things that are important in life. That's why when you become a parent someday, you will discover. You will discover the things that should and truly matter. Children remember, help us remember that life is a gift. Life is delicate, is vulnerable, and that we are responsible for each other. A child has a way of awake, awakening us only to, not only to the future or the things that matter, but also to the things that need to be made whole. Care for some space that belongs to everyone. No, you don't need to guard the whole forest or become a street sweeper. You can join groups that strengthen social love through the various ways they protect and beautify some space that belongs to everyone. That space can be vast, as vast as the climate, or it can be as small as a corner of a park or a piece of public art. It would be better if it were shared, if this space 
were something that was shared, a shared space that matters not just to you, but to the poor or to children or to old people. And number two, for all your sophistication, if you're Catholic, please try to receive communion. You might wish, because you are educated, you might say, that wafer, that white circular piece of bread is just carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, a piece of carbohydrate. Just remember, even the scientists of the world, they still do not know what matter is all about. What is it composed of? We do not know. The point of the bread, actually, is to recover our sense of sacrament, our sense of the sacred, in matter, in ordinary things. The hope is that we will be fed by our host and brought, hopefully, closer to holiness. And number one, make a box. Make a box for your valuables. Not as big as those balikbayan boxes. Huh? Uh, a tin box used for candy will do. Place your most treasured in that box. Money, if it's important to you. Mementos you keep. Remembrances, not just of what you have gotten, but what you have given. Since persons are too big to put in this box, maybe a picture of them will do. The point is to keep knowing what you treasure, what is important to you, and what you wish to bring with you to eternity. Let me end with this picture. In November 2013, the strongest typhoon in the world made landfall here in the Philippines. When that happened, massive amounts of relief aid came to us. Among the smallest donors was a six-year-old Japanese boy, Shuichi Kodo. He broke his piggy bank, took out all his savings, and gave his savings to us. Seeing this picture, I say, if children from far away can know what needs to be broken, I think we're not far from redemption. We can be trusted to take care and protect this wonderful gift of a garden. Thank you.